Hey YouTube, Bob here. So, uh, Schrodinger's disk system? Yeah, that title probably requires a little bit of explanation here before we get into things. Uh, so, uh, the first part, the disk system, a lot of you probably know what that is. It's this peripheral here that's sitting beneath my family computer or Famicom, which is pretty much just the Japanese version of the Nintendo Entertainment System that I have sitting right here next to it. Now, there, there are some pretty significant uh, differences between the two consoles, even though they play a lot of the same games, but uh, that's not the point of this video. The focal point here is the disk system, and if you don't know what that is, um, it is a peripheral uh, that was designed to play games not on the cartridges, but on these magnetic disks. And uh, a couple of the main reasons for that is, at the time, uh, to manufacture the chips necessary in game cartridges uh, was quite expensive. They saw a real increase in the price in the chips, so the, having games on these disks uh, eliminated that uh, need to charge more for the games. And plus, unlike game cartridges, these magnetic disks had read and write capabilities. So there were lots of uh, things uh, as far as kiosks where people could go and have new games written to their disks available in Japan that we didn't get here in the United States. But that's besides the point. The main point here, and this is where the Schrodinger reference comes in, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in this. I actually learned about uh, Schrodinger's cat, which is the thought experiment uh, that I, in, uh, I think it's uh, physics, that uh, was first explained to me in the American TV show The Big Bang Theory, which I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can see a short clip where they explain what Schrodinger's cat is. But basically, um, it's just an idea that explains that I don't know if this disk system works anymore. Uh, it could work. It might not work anymore. So it's basically just a big maybe. And the reason for that is uh, that it is uh, driven by a rubber belt. And these belts are notorious for experiencing rot over the years. And they're extremely hard to replace. Not only just finding the belt, but uh, getting into it, there's, you know, lots of, you know, I think there's a screw that you have to have in perfect alignment. And I tried it once on a different uh, model of this that I had, and I was not successful. So it does require some know-how and skill. But uh, I'm bringing this up now because um, it's almost been 10 years since I bought this disk system from a seller on eBay. And at that time, it was already old new stock. Uh, but now it's got an additional 10 years on it. So I am certainly not sure if that belt works anymore. Maybe it is rotted and the little pulley system, you know, that spins uh, the hub of this disk uh, to make it work uh, may no longer be functioning. So uh, what I thought would be kind of a neat experiment here in the spirit, uh, spirit of Schrodinger's cat is to use the disk system now with my new analog NT Mini Noir because it's supposed to be compatible with that and I'll fire this up for the first time in a couple years now and see if that belt is still in working order. So I'm going to invite you guys to come along with me on that ride. So here we go. Alright, so the first thing you need to have in order when using the disk system is your power supply. And uh, just like most other video game consoles, the Famicom does have an AC adapter, which I do have, but that requires an open outlet, which at this point I don't have. <laughs> so uh, we're going to use the other method of powering up the Famicom disk system, which is using batteries. You open up the top compartment here, and you can see that it will run just on 6C batteries. And you may be thinking that, wow, that seems like a lot of batteries, but if you consider that it only ever uses the batteries to uh, load the games, once the game is loaded into this RAM cart here, which functions as the cartridge, it basically just takes the data from the disk, transfers it to here, and then interfaces with the Famicom so that uh, so that you can play the game. So it's not constantly using the batteries. So that uh, that is why batteries is a viable way of powering the Famicom disk system. So let me get those batteries in here. All right, I've got all six of those C-size batteries in there. Going to put the cover back on, and then the RAM cart here, as you can see, it's just got the, this kind of looks like a Famicom cartridge. Um, it 
put, uh, goes into the top of your Famicom, or in this case, I'm going to be using my analog NT Mini Noir. And then this uh, connector right here just plugs into the back of the disk system. So let's get that all set up. All right, so I've got that RAM cart uh, plugged into the Famicom slot of the Analog NT Mini Noir. Got my copy of Super Mario Bros. 2 set and ready to go. So now we just need to turn the TV on, power it up, and see if uh, Schrodinger's cat is alive or dead. Does it work or does it not work? At this point, both are viable conclusions. Alright, so I've got the Super Mario Bros. 2 disc inserted into the disc system here. The um, RAM cart is loaded into the Analog NT Mini Noir. And typically when you turn on the Famicom, or the Analog NT Mini Noir in this case, uh, it will load up a little boot screen that comes from the RAM cart. And then if the disc system is able to spin up the disc, meaning that the disc is not rotted, it will load the information from the disc into the RAM cart so that you can play it on the actual console. So uh, we will know we're successful once we get past the boot screen if we're not greeted with any sort of error code, uh, of which there were several, and I think they were numbered error codes uh, that kind of let you know what the issue was. But uh, we'll know if we're successful if the red light comes on the, uh, the disc system, uh, letting us know know that uh, it is spinning up the disc and that's actually a pretty loud uh, procedure there so we'll probably hear it as well. So given that I'm using the analog NT Mini Noir I can actually use my controller to turn it on. So let's hold down select and push A and the system should turn on. Let's see if Schrodinger's cat is alive or dead. Does it work? Does it not? Alright here's the boot sequence now loading Looking good. We got the red light. We got the sound. No error codes yet. And boom, there is Super Mario Brothers 2. Awesome. So cool to see that my disk system that is so old these days now. God, I can't believe it's been 10 years since I bought this disk system. Um, and it's been sitting for a while. I haven't been playing disk system games uh, since I moved to this house, which is going on three years now. So it's good to see that the belt is in good shape. But if you happen to know of anybody who is... Um, a pro at replacing belts. I know I'm going to have to do this eventually. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to know about any services or individuals that know how to do that. But anyway, thank you for coming on this trip with me and I'm glad that I have some good news to share with you that Schrodinger's cat is alive or my disk system still works. Take care.